Welcome to Electro Online. Our next example on how to use the Lagrangian is the rolling disc attached to a spring. As the spring is moving back and forth, the rolling disc is moving back and forth as well. Now notice that there will be two kinds of kinetic energy involved here. We have translational kinetic energy and we'll have rotational kinetic energy. The Lagrangian is defined as the kinetic energy minus the potential energy and this equation will give us the equations of kinematics, the equations of motion. What we need to do is find these individual terms. Before we do that, we need to find the kinetic and the potential energy. Let's start with the potential energy. The potential energy of the system is equal to the energy stored in the spring, which is equal to one half kx squared, x being the distance of the rolling disk away from the equilibrium point. The kinetic energy will be equal to the sum of the translational energy, which is one half mv squared, plus the rotational energy, which is one half times the moment of, iner moment of inertia, times omega squared, the angular velocity. Notice the relationship between the linear velocity and the angular velocity and the moment of inertia of a solid disk. What we need to do now is make that transition. So we can say that the kinetic energy is equal to one half times the mass times the velocity squared plus one half times the moment of inertia is one half times the mass times r squared and omega can be written as v over r so this becomes v squared over r squared. Notice that the r squares cancel out which means that the kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared plus a quarter mv squared which is equal to three quarters mv squared. Now remember that v can be written as x dot which means that the kinetic energy ultimately can be written as three quarters times m times x dot squared. So here we have the kinetic energy and here we have the potential energy. Now we're ready to write the Lagrangian. The Lagrangian L is equal to kinetic energy minus the potential energy which is equal to kinetic energy three quarters mx dot squared minus the potential energy one half kx squared. Now we can find the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x. The partial of L with respect to x is equal to, notice there's only one term that has an x in it, this becomes minus two times a half is one, k times x. Next we need to find the partial of Lagrangian with respect to x dot. The partial of L with respect to x dot is equal to, there's only one term, so two times three which is six over four m x dot to the first power which is equal to three halves m x dot to the first power. So this becomes the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. Now we can take the time derivative of that, the ddt of the partial of L with respect to x dot and that is equal to, notice that would be three halves m x double dot. Now we're ready to plug that into the equation right here, which means we take the first term, 3 over 2 mx double dot, minus the partial value with respect to x, which is right here, but a minus times a minus is plus, that becomes plus k times x, that equals 0. We can now, let's see, multiply both sides by 2 thirds and divide both sides by m which means the equation becomes the following. It becomes x double dot plus two thirds times k over m times x is equal to zero. Now this looks like a simple harmonic equation equation. We can then assume that this is equal to omega squared, the angular frequency squared. So we can say that omega squared can be defined as two thirds times k over m which means that omega is equal to the square root of two-thirds k over m. And so when we plug that in here, we get the following equation. 
here we can say that this is equal to x double dot plus omega, well that would be omega squared times x is equal to zero, and if we then solve for this equation, that means that the position x can be described as some amplitude of oscillation a times either the sine or the cosine, let's make it cosine of omega t plus a phase angle, but we can ignore that, and what we can do now is say that x as a function of position, or a function of time, I should say, as a function of time, is equal to a times the cosine of, instead of omega, we can write the square root of 2 thirds k over m times t. And that would then describe the motion of a rolling disk attached to a spring. Now remember that if this was not a rolling disk that has moment of inertia, if moment of inertia was uh, not there, if this was a massless disk, so to speak, so we didn't have to take that into account, then the square root of 2 thirds would go away, and we end up with a times the cosine of the, the square root of k over m times t, and that's a familiar equation that you probably all are, are familiar with. And so here's another example of how to use a Lagrangian on a situation like this.